You walk into the room and you know you're about to have your last words with your parent. And the first thing I said was, you better have thought through what you're about to say to me right now. <laughs> this will leave an impact whichever way it goes. You know, I walk in and I sit down beside him and he's wearing this beautiful blue collared shirt and this beautiful blue bow tie. He also had blue eyes and so they matched. And <laughs> I said to him, other than present circumstances, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Dad. Hi, Jay. Even in death, still on TV. Humor was his medicine. The truth is I told my aunt to put that on the grave because like I think he said he wanted it. But, like I'm not like 100% sure, but it's good anyways. We all agree. Humor was his medicine. My dad was in my mind like in a way a larger than life character. You know, he loved his family, he loved his kids, and he loved his work. A father of five, Dr. J. Stephen Keystone was renowned in the field of tropical medicine and received the Order of Canada for his work. He also chose medically assisted death. David and Kevin Keystone, his sons, now want to share their dad's story and the end of life choice he made. You ready? Mm -hmm. Walk down memory lane. Yeah. Chemotherapy, head shave, round two, no problem. We took on the role of caregivers jumping in with both feet. We are a very sort of organized and coordinated bunch. There right here, we got Papa Jay and Uncle Dave. Professionally <laughs> swindled mattress. Little hospital slumber party, but... I go in there and I'm worried that he's sick and he wouldn't want to be filmed and whatever. No, but meanwhile he's, he's trying like, to... He's like, oh, it. yeah, yeah. And he's like, here, am I getting it too? <laughs> it was brilliant. Some personalities tend to gravitate to certain things or not. For me, for example, when changing his ileostomy bag, it's like connected to his bowels and like I'm doing this for him and we're there and it stinks a little bit and we're joking. And it's just like, how can you not laugh at this? It could have been by virtue of who he was and his ability to find humor at all that allowed us all to drop our guards. Uh, Dave and Uncle Jay, I've had my beard for 15 years and he always says, you growing a beard? I'm gonna shave it off for him because <laughs> I hated my beauty. Oh, you shaved it for him? Yeah, I took it off for him because he's dying like tomorrow or right. a couple days. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, I'm like I want to be able to kiss this man's face yeah, yeah, yeah. without him complaining about it. And you just said beauty. When you're taking care of someone and you're going through these motions with them, you're experiencing things that bond you in ways that you would never have before. It's not all darkness, for sure. There's a lot of light in it. For decades, medically assisted death was mainly associated with Switzerland. But now that's grown to include several other countries, including Canada. Medical assistance in dying, also known as MAID, was passed into Canadian federal legislation in 2016. The criteria to request medical assistance in dying includes having a serious and incurable illness, disease, or disability, as well as being in an advanced state of irreversible decline in capability. Yeah, I don't say these things properly at all. My dad was diagnosed with colon cancer. I can recall when my dad told us that he was choosing medical assistance in death. He had actually told me at that time the date that he had scheduled it for. And he said, I had a really good life and now I want a good death. Something that I think it's important to do when caring for someone who's dying who's close to you is to think about and approach sensitively, but have really difficult conversations. Listen to the person who's dying and help fulfill their wishes and their mission. Between 2016 and 2019, almost 14,000 Canadians chose medically assisted death. The majority were between the ages of 56 and 90, and more than 60% had cancer. It takes a lot of courage to make the decision to die. You are realizing that hope to get better and whatever is not gonna happen. You know that your family and friends are gonna be really sad. 
You know that you're ending, as far as you might know, your consciousness, depending on your faith. And I think that that should be taken super seriously and respected very much when someone does ultimately make that decision. My dad died peacefully and surrounded by love. And I think that that's what we all want for ourselves.